We'll now move on to take a look at the practicalities of working with SpaceTherm on site. Because SpaceTherm comes in a variety of different systems for a huge range of applications, today we'll mainly focus on general installation guidance that applies whatever the circumstances. Our team have worked on projects of all sizes all over the world, so whatever project-specific requirements you have, it's unlikely to be something we haven't come across before. So please get in touch for more specific guidance. As we discussed earlier, Space Therm is a composite insulation blanket, combining silica aerogel with a fibrous carrier to provide strength and flexibility. In addition to providing a very low thermal conductivity, the resultant material is both vapour permeable and hydrophobic. This means Space Therm can be used in a wide range of construction application on almost any type of structure. The insulation contains no blowing agents, so does not give off gas, and extensive test data shows no loss of thermal performance over a 50-year period. The range of Space Therm systems comprises this material bonded to a range of facing boards to suit specific applications. Space Therm board should be stored securely, under cover and protected from weather, similarly to standard plasterboard sheets. Care should be taken when sorting and handling boards to ensure they are kept flat and well supported, as the additional weight and flexibility of the aerogel mats can lead to the facing material cracking if the boards bend excessively. Packing and wrapping should not be removed until immediately prior to installation, to minimise the potential for dust spreading on site. Working with Space Therm Aerogel can produce a lot of dust as the boards are handled and cut, and minimising this is an important part of the installation process. The best way to avoid dust spread is to ensure that the process is well planned and access around the worksite is as limited as possible. Preparatory work, like relocating services and any repair work to substrates, should be carried out beforehand so the installation of the Space Therm boards can proceed uninterrupted. Likewise, access to the worksite should be restricted only to personnel required to conduct the installation and the number of access points minimised. Any unnecessary doors or windows should be closed and sealed for the duration of the installation. When working with Space Therm, the use of PPE is recommended in addition to dust control measures. Because the dust is hydrophobic in nature, it can cause drying and irritation of the skin and eyes. So the use of gloves, goggles and a suitable dust mask or respirator is advisable. Particularly when cutting space therm boards, local dust distraction systems should be used if available. Full material safety information is available from our technical department. Cutting space therm boards is best done outside if possible. But if it must be done indoors, ensure the area is well ventilated. If cutting indoors, it's also a good idea to use plastic sheeting to contain dust. If mechanical saws have a provision to fit local dust extraction, such systems should be used. The boards can be cut with a handsaw if necessary, but mechanical cutting with a jigsaw or circular saw are generally more straightforward. In all cases when cutting, it is important to make sure the board is well supported and cuts should always be made from the internal facing side. Cutouts required for switches, sockets or other services can be made in the normal manner by drilling corners, then cutting out with the jigsaw. It's worth bearing in mind, however, that such cutouts lead to localised cold bridging, so avoiding placing the services on the external wall is always preferable if possible. Space there multi and wallboard can be fixed to timber battens or stud work using standard drywall screws. Space Therm Multi, due to its harder surface, may require countersinking first to provide a smooth finish and recess of screws. Timber battens should be at least 25mm deep and secured to the substrate using fixings appropriate to the substrate and anticipated loadings. Battens should also be spaced at 400mm centres maximum, properly located to support all board joints and edges and protected with a strip of DPC if necessary. The space therm boards should be secured to the timber using drywall screws equivalent to the thickness of the space therm board plus 25mm at no greater than 300mm centres and at all edges and joints. 
Detailed guidance is given in the BS 8212 Code of Practice for drylining, and it's a good idea to review this before undertaking the installation. When fixing to solid masonry, direct short-fired fixings are an option that can be considered with both Space Therm Multi and Plywood Reinforced Space Therm Direct Fix Boards. Before installing boards this way, it's important to make sure the masonry substrate is suitable for fixing in this manner, because there is less scope for levelling than is the case with timber battens. Particularly, care must be taken to ensure the substrate is straight and level. If this is not the case, or if large voids will be left behind the insulation boards, the use of a parge coat over the masonry should be considered to level up the surface and ensure the boards can sit flat. If a parge coat is used, additional length should be added to the fixings to ensure they penetrate the parge coat into solid masonry beneath. Fixings should be shot fired at maximum 500mm centres horizontally and vertically, ensuring all board edges and corners are properly fixed. Power settings for nail guns will vary according to the type of tool and substrate, so detailed guidance from the tool and fixing suppliers should be sought prior to installation. Fixings should be at least the board thickness plus 25mm, with extra added to any parge coat if necessary. Space therm wall liner boards are fixed directly to a continuous solid substrate wall by using Insta-Stick Foam Adhesive. Assemble the adhesive gun following the manufacturer's instructions and make sure that the substrate wall is as clean and dust free as possible. Start in a lower corner of the wall and begin by placing the first wall liner board on the floor with the MGO side facing down. Apply a bead of adhesive around the full perimeter of the board, maintaining a 30mm distance from the edge, then zigzag adhesive across the entire board surface. Ensure the edges of the board are well supported by adhesive. Holding the board at the edges, carefully lift it into position onto the wall and make sure the adhesive side makes good contact with the substrate wall and that any cutouts match. Gently press the board against the wall, holding until sufficient adhesion occurs. As per the instructions on the adhesive, a second pushback against the substrate and levelling should be carried out after approximately five minutes. The first row of wall liner boards should be supported by existing skirting boards or a batten. Continue this process, tiling the boards across the wall, either staggered or in line. Where boards meet at a corner, it's important to make sure the layers of insulation overlap continuously without leaving a gap to form a cold bridge. For an external angle, the insulation boards should extend beyond the edge by a distance equal to the insulation thickness of the panel. The insulation layer on the other panel is then trimmed by an equivalent distance, allowing the boards to intersect. On an internal angle, this is reversed, with the board facing trimmed back rather than the insulation. After fixing the boards, the joint is taped and any gaps filled. Metal reinforcing can be used for added strength if necessary. Please note, Self-adhesive glass fibre tape is not suitable for use with the MGO board, therefore alternative tape should be utilised. The plasterboard and magnesium oxide finishes of the space therm boards can be jointed, plastered and decorated more or less the same way as uninsulated wallboard. Prior to application of plaster, both at joints and as a skim coat, it's important to make sure the boards are free of dust as this may cause issues with plaster adhesion. Dust removal is made far simpler by using a vacuum cleaner. Prior to taping, plastering or decorating the magnesium oxide facing on space cell wall liner and space cell multiboards, we recommend the use of the appropriate primer to prepare the surface. For finishing with plaster skim, our plaster bond primer should be used and for painting or papering, we have an acrylic primer. These should be applied and left to cure as per instructions that are supplied with them. These primers are specifically designed for use with the MGO wallboards as traditional plasterboard primers are not suitable. Finally, the space therm boards do not provide sufficient strength to allow the fixing of shelves, kitchen units or TV brackets to the laminate board alone. Any such fixings should be made into the masonry substrate or onto timber studwork. In a floor application, 
Space Sir Multi is laid over a structural base as a floating floor. So before starting, it's important to ensure the existing floor is level and free of any movement. As with walls, any necessary repair work should be undertaken prior to installing the Space Therm boards. Boards should be laid starting from the corner furthest from the point of access and properly aligned to allow a straight joint with the next run of panels. Joints should be staggered a minimum of 200mm between rows and an expansion gap should be left at perimeters. Flanking strips can be added at the perimeters if required. Once the boards are laid, butt joints between sheets and perimeters should be sealed using wrap tight tape to control dust movement between adjacent panels. It may be necessary to clean the panels prior to applying the tape to ensure good adhesion to the surface. Space Air Multi is similar to an acoustic floating floor in terms of movement, so while flexible floor coverings can be used with no special measure, rigid coverings such as tiles or laminate may require special measures such as flexible adhesive or plywood overlay. If fitting this type of floor covering, the advice of the flooring supplier should be sought to confirm if this is needed. Due to the compressible nature of Space Therm, we recommend that any thickness over 20mm is discussed with our technical team for suitability. Installing the Wrap Therm system is similar to working with our wrap tight vapour permeable membrane and similar installation conditions apply. Wrap Therm can be applied to most timber, masonry and metal substrates provided the surface is dry and free from dust, loose material and other contaminants. It's also important to make sure the surface is smooth and free of any lumps, ridges and sharp protrusions. Wrap Therm should be installed on dry surfaces when temperatures are above freezing to ensure a good bond is achieved. On very rough or porous substrates, the use of a primer can be considered to ensure optimal bonding of the wrap type component. The sheets of wrap therm should be pre-cut to fit the wall and around any doors and window openings or structural elements present. The sheets have a 50mm lap edge where the wrap tight membrane extends beyond the insulation layer and joints and sheet positions should take this into account. The airtight layer should be kept continuous with adjacent sheets lapped, not butted. Strips of wrap tight tape can be used under joists to ensure this if a butt joint is unavoidable or at corners and openings. The simplest way to install self-adhesive sheets is to peel back the release liner 150mm at the top edge of the sheet, then fix this in place. Work from the centre outwards using firm pressure with a hand roller. The liner can then be removed working downwards with the roller used to remove air bubbles and ensure a good bond is achieved. So, that concludes today's Toolbox Talk. Let's now move on to the Q&A session.